Section 104, which is what Beckett's about, Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, man, there's nothing I enjoy talking about more than 104. Now, we'll keep it fairly brief today, but like, what a fascinating provision because of the gray area that it creates. So why don't we jump in? What is is 104, right? So, um, you know, we, we talked earlier about Glenshaw Glass, and if I forgive Damien's debt, he's got income. It's because, look, you know, if you have an accession to wealth, you, you go to bed at night wealthier than when you woke up in the morning, you're paying tax on that unless something says you're not. And we have to counter that motivation with the reality that sometimes when you get paid, you're not richer, you're just being made whole. And so Section 104 evolved over a number of years, but it says You know, if an individual, so this is an individual level provision, if an individual wins a lawsuit or or settles a lawsuit and payments are made to compensate the individual for personal injury or physical harm, then those payments are excludable. Why? Because if, I don't want to say this, I don't want to jinx you, I'll do jinx myself. If I'm walking down the street, right, and a car loses control on the the snow here and skids through a stop sign and, you know, hits me and, and blows out my knee, um, if I sue and get paid, you know, get get paid for that, I'm not richer. I'm just getting made whole. You, right. you call it the ski season, right? Like I'm just being made whole. And so 104, again, it evolved over a number of years in, in kind of some interesting ways. But where we stand today is if you get compensated either through judgment or settlement for personal injury or physical harm, it's tax free. Okay. Now there's always exceptions. If part of it is allocated to to medical expenses you previously deducted, then it's not tax-free. Punitive damages aren't tax-free, but let's just keep it simple, okay? You get paid because you get hit by a car, the bulk of the proceeds are going to be tax-free. All right, that seems simple. So why do I say, you know, it spawns so much awesome legislation or litigation over the years? Because the committee reports, and then eventually built into 104, says, hey, personal injury and physical harm, tax-free. You know, it's not tax free if you get paid for emotional distress. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then here's what they say. And this, this really makes it tricky. If you suffer emotional distress, somebody bullies you, they're hard on you at work, whatever. And that emotional distress gives rise to physical symptoms, stomach aches, headaches, whatever it may be. Right. And you sue and you get paid. What you're looking at is the genesis of the claim. And the genesis of your claim was that they were bullying you. There was emotional distress. And maybe bullying is a bad example because it can get physical. But, you know, like discrimination or, or whatever it may be at work, where if somebody's just causing you emotional distress and you sue for that, even if that emotional distress, distress causes physical symptoms, it's all going to be taxable. But on the flip side, if somebody hurts you physically, right, you get hit by a car and it causes emotional distress, like I'm scared to cross the street for the next you know, two years, and I get paid for that, all the payments are tax free, because they arise out of a claim of physical harm. And so holy cow, you create this, this really tough determination that someone has to make somewhere because think about how the line is blurred between physical injury and emotional distress, right? In this case, this Beckett case is a good indication. You know what I like about this Beckett case? I don't know if they got it right. Right. Mm-hmm. You look at this case compared to other cases, and you're like, I don't know, they seem like the same facts and they went different ways. But we'll talk about kind of how it's evolved. But think about trying to determine whether something is personal injury or emotional distress. Distress. And the example I give a lot is let's say you had like a high school cheerleader and the coach is telling her, you're 20 pounds overweight. You're 20 pounds overweight. You got to stop eating. Right. You can't fit in your uniform. Just being really hard on. Her, right. She develops an eating disorder right? She sues the school and wins. Is that emotional distress? Is that a physical injury in the form of an eating disorder? I wouldn't want to be the one to have to make that determination, right? But that's where courts have to make determinations all the time. And so 104 bleeds into some really interesting fact patterns. This old 104 case is not a great 104 case, but it's a fascinating case. If you're if people are interested, go back and read the Perez case from a couple of years ago, where uh, a lady sold her eggs. She yeah. sold her eggs, two eggs for 50 grand in a year. And she had these really smart attorneys. 
And they drafted the agreement to say, you're not being paid for your eggs. You're not being paid for the services of providing the eggs. You know what we're paying you for? Personal injury and physical harm because taking your eggs hurts. And they tried to fit it under 104. And the court said, you can't fit that under 104 because 104 contemplates a scenario where someone hurts you against your will. Right, you can't right. consent to get hurt and then recover payment for it and exclude it. Otherwise, right, what would every NFL contract look like, NHL contract look like, right? Every middle linebacker would say, I know you're paying me, you know, seven million a year, but three and a half million of it each year is to compensate me for the beating I take every Sunday, right? So you can't, you can't enter into a, a 104 arrangement. So you can see where 104 is really problematic. And this case is a really interesting one because I think it'll just show everybody how blurred the lines really are. Um, and so we had a, a taxpayer who's a, a nursing assistant and she suffered from seizures. So she came into this with a physical ailment of, of seizures, okay? And at work, she felt like they were not accommodating her disability and she would suffer seizures at work and uh, once, you know, had to get stitches and get rushed to the ER. And um, she eventually got terminated and she sued. Okay. And so when she sued, she sued under the Americans with Disabilities Act um, for discrimination. And that's important. And you know why it's important? Because what did we say? The first thing they look at is what was the genesis of the claim? And if you claim you're being discriminated against, that doesn't sound like most cases to be personal injury and physical harm. So we're kind of up against it right from the start here for this taxpayer. But her situation's a little unique because as part of her claim, she's saying, hey, by discriminating against me, they didn't accommodate for my seizures. I got hurt. I got physical pain out of this thing. So she sues them and they settle and she wins like 28 grand. Okay. And there's two interesting components of this from a tax perspective. She wins 19,000 that they call emotional distress. <laughs> the lawyers did her no favor here, David. They call no. it emotional yeah. distress, pain and suffering, and physical injuries, right? We don't want to see those words combined, emotional distress. and Like pick a lane, go with one or the other, right? Makes our lives a lot easier. And then she got $8,000 of reimbursed uh, attorney fees. And so on her return, she asked the judge in the, in the state, not the tax court judge, the judge in the in the case where she won the settlement, she said, hey, this 18 grand I'm getting paid, uh, or 19 grand for emotional distress and pain and suffering, is it taxable to me? And she said, the judge said, no, because it's for personal injury. So she said, all right, I'm not gonna include it. She also didn't include the $8,000 of attorney fees, which is low hanging fruit. That's a problem, right? Yep. Assignment of income principle, you have to pick that income up. The thing is, in this unique situation, it didn't matter. Why? Because under current law, you get whipsaw if you win a tax court case, right? I'm sorry, not if you win a tax court case, if you win a, any case. Any right? case, you yeah. yeah. Income, but the attorney's fees go as, you know, other miscellaneous deductions and they don't exist. But there's a rare type of attorney's fees that get flipped onto page one of the tax return under section 62. And including in that is discrimination cases like the American Disabilities Act. So for her, yeah, she didn't pick up the eight grand, but it ended up netting a zero because if she picked it up, she would have deducted it on page one. So what they were left to figure out is that 19,000, you know, what is it? And uh, was it personal injury? Was it more like emotional distress? And, um, you know, they, they go through the history of 104 and 104 is fascinating because like I said, you have cases like Perez, maybe the most famous 104 case is... Uh, Remember when Den Dennis Rodman was playing for the Bulls and he fell underneath the, the stanchion and he kicked that photographer? Yep. Well, that photographer set some precedent in the 104 law because that ph photographer went straight to the hospital complaining of groin and back pain. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. Anything, right? But they looked, couldn't find anything wrong with him. He sued Rodman. He recovered part of the payment. The case is called Amos. He recovered part of the payment. And uh, the court said, hey, none of this is personal injury because... No one found anything wrong with him. I, the IRS said that. But the court said, doesn't matter if he was hurt. He alleges that he was hurt. And some of the payment was in the agreement to compensate him for being hurt. So even if he wasn't hurt, he gets to uh, exclude that. So under Amos, we learn you don't actually have to have a physical condition. But now we've had other cases similar 
to uh, what we saw here in this case that really, really make it hard to predict which way the case is going to go, right? And I just want to show you, there's a case called Barbado from a couple years ago, to show you how tough it is to get to the genesis of the claim. In Barbado, we had a taxpayer who drove for the U.S. Postal Service, and she was out driving one day, got in a car accident, right? Mm -hmm. That's physical pain, obviously, but she didn't sue. Nothing happened. Like, it wasn't an issue there. The issue is she was brought back into, um, you know, the post office itself. She wasn't out there on the road. And then she started to get harassed by her boss. And, you know, she sued, uh, like her boss put her back on the road. She wasn't ready to go back on the road. And she sued uh, and claimed that they had caused her depression, anxiety, and sleep problems. And so under a 104 analysis, you could say, well, the genesis of this whole thing was a car accident. That's physical injury. Yeah, but we're worried about the genesis of the claim. And the claim wasn't, I was in a car accident. That happened years before. The claim was, hey, you're harassing me at work. And now I got, you know, sleep problems and anxiety. Well, those are emotional distress symptoms arising, or sorry, physical symptoms arising from emotional distress. And the court said, hey, the origin of your claim was discrimination. So it's not right going to be uh, excludable under 104. And so we would think that that's going to govern the fact pattern here because it sounds pretty similar. Came into the deal with seizures, got harassed. They made the seizures worse. And now you're suing an emotional distress type claim, discrimination. So you would think this would go against the taxpayer. But then we had a case called Domini from a couple of years ago, D-O-M-E-N-Y, were very similar. Somebody came into a role with MS, and while they were in their role, they found out that their boss was uh, embezzling, and they went through a great deal of stress, which you know flared up the MS. And they ultimately turned in their boss for embezzling and got fired. And so then they sued uh, and basically you know claimed that, hey, you know, wrongful termination, but I also had a flare up of my MS caused by all the stress it put me under. And in that case, the court said, man, flare up of MS caused by distress. That's more than just a, a small little thing. It caused you to miss work. Like this is, we think there's a huge physical injury component to what you went through. So even though the suit really wasn't because of the MS, it was because of being wrongfully terminated. Here they allowed for 104 exclusion. And so the takeaway from this, what I'm teaching you is, we don't know how these cases are going to go. They're really tough to predict. And that makes it tough for us within the industry to plan for it. Now, the cleanest thing we can do is to not have an agreement drafted like this one in Beckett, where it says you're getting 19 grand for emotional distress, physical injury, right? Um, because if it just says physical injury, things are a lot, lot better. So what they ended up doing in this case is with the 19 grand, they really looked at it more like Domini with the MS and less like uh, the, the car accident. They said, hey, you had a pre-existing physical injury, which all three taxpayers did, but it's the actions specifically of the people you're suing that made that physical injury worse, right? Like with the car accident, she got some anxiety and stuff from their harassment, but that didn't exacerbate this pre-existing physical injury. In the MS example and in this example with the seizures, the lack of accommodating made and the way they treated the person made their physical injuries worse. And so the court said some element of this 19 grand is for personal injury and physical harm. But things are never easy because in the agreement they said 19 grand was emotional distress and physical injury and personal harm, they said, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take the 19 grand and split it up. And we'll say one third of it um, is personal injury. And what I don't get, Damien, it seems like such a simple thing, but it said the 19 grand was for emotional distress. Um, the exact agreement said it was for, oh yeah, pain and suffering, emotional distress yeah. and physical distress. And I'm like, well, why is physical distress and pain and suffering? And they're like, why didn't they give her two thirds? Two thirds, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, excludable, but they didn't, you know, they just gave her the one third. So, you know, the big takeaway from 104 is every year there's going to be a 104 case. 
But it really comes down, in my experience, to being proactive and making sure if you can be there on the front end, if your clients win any type of settlement or, or litigation, to get the language written in a favorable manner. But to also understand if you're not on the front end and you have to make a determination after the fact, you really got to look at the origin of the claim. And if the origin of the claim was you hurt me physically, basically all payments aside from punitive damages, even if they're for emotional distress, are going to be tax free. But boy, if the emotional, if the origin of the claim is some form of emotional distress, even if it caused stomach aches and headaches, usually it's going to be um, completely taxable. But as the Beckett case shows, sometimes it's not cut and dry. And you just got to use your judgment and say, there's some element here of physical injury and some allocation can be done to tax-free treatment.